Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Great Goatee Hunt from Inmax. I'm Ben Hansen, joined by Ana Diaz. Hey. Welcome, welcome, Ana. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you, by the way. But you probably noticed that, hey, there's a fancy new intro for the Great Goatee Hunt. So thank you for noticing that. And thanks to Aiden Walker for designing that. And the music comes from the Super Mercado Bros here in Minneapolis. So thanks to everybody. I can maybe put some links in the description for all that stuff. But it is good to be here. Let us know in the chat if you can see us, if you can hear us. Uh, and if you can see Among Trees, which is what we're going to be streaming here today. And so Among Trees is a new survival game that's quite beautiful. Um, and I've played just the very, very beginning of it, but we're going to be starting a new game here. Anna, where do you stand on survival games overall? Um, You know, I haven't played that many. I have been wanting to play them for a while. Okay. And I, ha like, I have, like, um, one of my siblings always bothers. I like them if they're multiplayer. I think that's more fun, like, collaborative survival. Right. And this is still so. single player only, I believe. It's also an early access. And so they have a handy roadmap, actually, like, baked into the game here so you can see what they have coming up on the horizon and stuff but i mean but you're like a minecraft person right oh yeah yeah i didn't realize that minecraft counts yeah i guess I, so. it's like so early on in the genre that it's like well i guess it's kind of the basis yeah. for a lot of this popularity to begin with yeah i've been playing um a ton of terraria lately so i guess that sort of falls into that oh yeah as well why'd you pick that up um well so they, <laughs> they actually updated it like they released an update a couple weeks ago, like a big update. They're still, you know, um, working on that game, which is crazy. I mean, That's the developers so keep saying this is the last update, this is the last update, but then they keep adding stuff. I mean, when they're so. making one gazillion dollars, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know why they'd ever stop developing for Terraria. Right? Yeah, like, why make another game? Unless, like, creatively you want that, but, yeah. which I get. Uh, hello, everybody in the chat. Raisin B Man, Undead Merchant, Dent, Gamer Gamer Seven. Great name on Twitch. Thank you so much, Jackson Arnold, uh, and Odd Low. Hello, everybody. Um, has anybody played Among Trees in the chat? Let me know. Uh, we are trying to upgrade our cabin over here, which right now is a terrible shack, and there's a bunch of sticks and pieces of wood around just for the first little bit of an upgrade here. But. Have the Terraria devs worked on anything else? I'm trying to remember if they've done... Wasn't there some game that was connected with them in some way a couple years ago? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I haven't played anything by them other than Terraria, but it's entirely possible. Like, Terraria, they've had the time. Like, even with the updates they've been doing for Terraria, like, that came out in what? I want to say like it came out in 2012 or something crazy like that. I think that. that's right. Or maybe even, God, it could be even going back to like 2011. Where I it know. It clearly inspired yeah. by Minecraft or maybe like that early version of Minecraft before yeah. that went 1.0. All right, let's see if we have enough for the actual big cabin upgrade here. Uh, Call Tire says he hasn't heard of Among Trees. It's on the Epic Game Store right now. Five more sticks. Now this is survival. So these are these little flickering sticks. Got to get those. Oh yeah, May 26th, 2011 for Terraria. This is Undead Merchant. Thank you for being our crack Perfect. researchers. Thanks. Yeah. yeah, old game. Do you think it's just like the the social aspect that keeps you going with Terraria? like, Or is it the core game design you're so into that you do it on your own? It's social. Like, I Also, it was cool because like last week... I got to show it to three people who had never played it before. Ooh. And so I sort of took them through, and that was really fun. <laughs> yeah. Was anything shocking or, like, difficult for them to wrap their brains around? Um, I think they just weren't expecting it to be such a built-out game. Like, you sort of start playing, and it looks pretty simple. You're like, oh, it's sort of like a Stardew Valley Minecraft type thing. Yeah. Um, but then, like, there is a lot of... They're like a lot of biomes. There's a lot of variation of play. And then, you know, you just find like those really fun little gems of upgradable items yeah. that, you know, are just bring joy to playing it. So speaking of joy, ready for this? Yeah. Skadoosh. Oh, 
Okay. Wait. Well, that kind of lessened the impact, but still. <laughs> Ganoosh! <laughs> look look uh, who's here. Oh, did Jeffum jump on? Hey, sorry. <laughs> Jeffum, not only does you jumping on <laughs> just confuse us, but also it ruins the entire layout for the stream. Uh, I also... Perfect. Welcome, Jeffum. Uh, this is Among Trees. You've missed us picking up um, 10 huge sticks and making this cabin, which I believe is basically like endgame content at this point. I don't think a cabin can get any nice. better than this. Uh, oh, Simon D... 40J on Twitch it says first time viewer. Thanks for being here. Anna, do you want to pull up Twitch? Do you want to rechat a little bit as we go? Yeah. All right. Now, people on Twitch, let us know crafting room, storage attic, or cooking room. Let us know which you would like us to make as the first real item here. Uh, so, we are playing in a mode where there is hunger. Um, so also yell out um, every time that I need to eat a little bit, but I already like this game. Oh, cooking yells everybody. Looks like they want cooking, yep. All right, well, it seems like the least practical, but that's gaming, baby. So it's very nice. You can just hit T, and then it's just pinned right to the side there so you can see exactly what you need, which is very handy. Nice. So Are there monsters on this island? Let's find out together. It seems pretty darn peaceful right now. Uh... But I love just a nice, clean interface on a genre that's a little bit hardcore, like survival here. But like, look how clean and pleasant this entire experience is. I Do you like really a nailed. nice, clean Assassin's Creed interface? Is that exactly Assassin's Creed? Those those buttons in the corner should look. Oh, really? Assassin's Creed. Well, Assassin's Creed needs a hunger meter, I think. All right, uh, great forest champion Jeffum. Which way should we be moving to find these bolts and driftwood? Uh, I think east. All right, and everybody knows that the sun is setting in the west, and so we go, yeah, this way. But it... Right? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Unless it's like city slickers where I remember they were looking at the sun trying to figure out which direction they were going, and they said, well, the sun sets in the west, but we're currently in the west, so I think the sun is technically overlapping us. That was a fun mind-bending puzzle for a kid. Oh. Jute rope. So, Jeff, I played like um, maybe 20, 30 minutes of this on my own. And mm -hmm. the weird thing is, I did not see a single piece of driftwood. Uh, so, that might be a tall order to make this amazing. Uh, you need specifically driftwood? You need three pieces of driftwood uh, to make this cooking. Okay, nonsense. so I hate to be a critic, but how is the isn't driftwood like associated with water? Yes, I think so. So that's why it might be challenging because I haven't seen water yet. But I guess let's see. To find water, we should go downhill. Is that is that going to be? Yeah, I love how you're approaching this like an actual survival game. I would just like walk around. I wouldn't. <laughs> strategize well when everything is just kind of like a beautiful blue haze i'm trying to come up with any logic for where yeah we might be going here Ooh. yeah no that makes a lot of sense heavy face 47 says there is a river nearby awesome also uh somebody asked if you can jump yes you can look at this okay so let's try and find that river and let's rub this poison oak all over our body real quick doesn't this game look nice it does it's like the ultimate Firewatch-esque but survival mm. experience. Yeah. Here. Jeff, I mean, you like the woods? A uh, little. A little bit. A little bit yeah. of the woods. <gasps> Rabbit. Get him. So the UI for the stamina, it's the red area in the middle there. Ah! Okay. <laughs> um, but I'm a little confused about the right versus the left and how everything works there for what it's trying to indicate because there's like two different things i don't know yeah is is oh. the red part just kind of filling up as the day goes on mm, i'm not sure that could be uh i will need to rest at some point there yeah do you need to eat anything oh, um, oh like, there's your water we got it and now to drown myself um i don't think so so i'm like halfway on the old uh, food meter And this is that confusing pr thing with games, with looking at the um, looking at the sleep meter. 
It's like, okay, does that mean that when it's all the way full, I'm tired? Or when it's all the way down? Like, which one is that trying to... Okay. Yeah, it's got to be down. You're, you're overthinking that. Okay. Den asks, does City Slickers work for people not from the Midwest? Because I'm from Minnesota and remember loving that movie. And that's a great question. Oh, like if you're just like born and raised in Wyoming, or you're like, this is the dumbest movie I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. I think it would work no matter what. I mean, that's a timeless classic. And then the search- I've never seen yeah, but City Slickers. You're, you're from Minnesota too, so. I mean, it's funny because... You know, if you're from the West, then you get to look at it and just laugh at those guys for being idiots and city slickers, right? And then if you're from the city, you get the exotic nature of like, ooh, going to wrestle a cow and other fun stuff. Maybe. Um, let's see. Do you think I can die from jumping off this waterfall? Mm. It's worth a shot. Okay. Let's see, Jeff. Um, how I much of I don't the, think you will. Really? But Jeff, um, how yeah. much of the fugitive uh, dialogue do you have memorized? Uh, just the I don't care. I don't care. What the hell? Oh, <laughs> that's surprisingly <laughs> pleasant. All that right. was anticlimactic. Thank you. Early access among trees. Uh, Trofana saying, just drop some wood in the river, and we'll get driftwood. <laughs> No, I don't know if that's a joke, but let's try it. <laughs> yeah, any wood that's technically drifting down a river is driftwood, I believe. Did that go in the river? Did that I go think in- you just threw it away. Oh, it just like evaporates? Damn it. You screwed us for the last time, Trollfana. We needed you. Anna, how's your week going? It's going well. Um, Tuesday only. So, yeah. not a lot's happened. But I was actually in the woods this weekend. So that oh, was really? very nice. What were you doing? Uh, so, my grandparents own a farm like in the middle of nowhere, Wisconsin. So, it was oh, just there. Cool. And I got my COVID test back. It's negative. Hey, so congratulations. <laughs> I took that time to go see family while I was for sure safe yeah god how so you want to give a rundown of why you're worried about covid or just that saga in your life oh so basically um i mean for any folks um who aren't familiar with what's happening in the twin cities like there are the riots and um protests and so um i had been out doing like cleanups uh multiple mornings and uh my partner had also been out and um he was showing like some symptoms so he like we weren't sure if there were allergies but then the state had like a bunch of free testing sites for like precisely for people who had been outside and were around people so we took advantage of that and it was free and it was really easy actually to get tested is it like the weird swab in the mouth thing in the nose Mm. yeah yeah but that's nice then you're able to enjoy your grandparents time and be able to be like yeah. all right now i can hug these people and not feel bad about it at least right yeah. now yeah exactly so oh god why didn't i ruby feet oh i guess i can't that's what i need the kitchen for is to god do i have any other edible things can i eat a flower are these things i can eat yeah those look like mushrooms oh yeah, yeah. chanterelle Great. Uh, so, did you go for a nice hike in the woods or like being out in the country? What does that mean for you? It's literally, yeah, it's just like walking in the woods. Um, there are some paths that they groom. Um, so, it was just sort of walking around. Saw a bunch of turkeys, like wild turkeys. That was fun. All right. And That's deer, fun. and you know, it's Wisconsin, so it there's nothing like much this. else there besides. How dare you! Sorry. I had, I had a weird experience on Sunday. I went for a long walk in Minneapolis, and there's like a huge train yard around northeast Minneapolis. And so I was walking around that and just like, you know, way out in the back. And it's really a weird area where nobody is. And there was, um, there was a train car. And then s- sitting on the train tracks, there was a huge red-tailed hawk. And so I'm like, ooh, that's cool. I'm going to get close. 
Oh, whoops. Launch that stamina. Uh, I'm going to see how close I can get to this red tail hawk before it flies away. And I was walking towards it, and I then got scared. Oh, scared like I am now of these bees. Give me these. Oh, collect them, collect them. Ah! Oh, no. I guess not. Anyways, but I was just getting closer and closer to this. Oh, my God. <gasps> get away. Yeah. He's come for the honey. He'll be distracted. Get the honey. That's a big bear. Oh, he's so pissed. Go get it. Well, at least he's not after me. So I'm just going to run this way. Because what are you supposed to do if you see a bear? You're supposed to make yourself really tall and big and like mm -hmm. unfrill your jacket and, and sing a song or something. Yeah, just back away slowly. Great. Well, there we go. Goodbye, bear. Um, anyway, so I was getting closer and closer to this red hawk, and I was like within 10 feet, and this thing was not flying away. And it got to the point where it was like ruffling its feathers and looking at me. And I think it's one of the few times in my life I've been scared of a bird attacking mm. me. So it's like, well, mm. I want to get a good picture of this thing, but at the same time, I don't want a red tail hawk just to rip my face off. So I, mm. I stood yeah. down and walked away, but that thing was very cool to see. All right, so I'm looking for, not for the kitchen, but there's also, um, Look at that. there's a recipe for, recipe that needs moss. And so moss grows on stumps. So if anybody sees like a tree stump somewhere, there's going to yeah. be some moss baked in there. Well, and moss grows on the side that the sun rises on, right? So, so east? Yeah. Do you think? Ooh, I wonder if they held true to that. Right? It's interesting there's no compass, so we can't easily tell, right? Uh, oh. Oh, no. Uh, hmm. I'm starving real bad. <laughs> what am I supposed to be doing? You can't eat the beets? Just eat the beets. I can't. It says you gotta cook them. No. Can't be eaten raw. <gasps> what the heck? Rabbit, uh, I need you! <laughs> Come back! Uh, Alright, if we just sprint around enough, there's bound to be something I can shove in my mouth, right? Yeah, I mean, there are all those rabbits. Well, <laughs> I can't catch Chofana. them, Anna. Chofana's asking if we can make a fire. This is something I was also wondering. Ooh, good question. Um, well, we might have to... Oh! Look at this! There we go. Whatever it is, I'll eat it. No time to read the details. Oh, that was good. That filled us up quite a bit. Yeah. All right. So, still looking for driftwood, but hey, is this water? Can you no. catch a rabbit by hand, or do we need to make something special? I think we again? need to actually craft something. Ooh, look at this. Oh, well, look at We got a gold mine here, folks. There's a fire, too. Really? Wait, Can where? You... This? Well, I thought that wood, I thought you could make a fire out of that. Oh, no, I don't think yeah. so. Yeah. Just for searching and making. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff here, but nothing that I need. Heavy Face says campfire is a crafting recipe that requires the crafting room. Oh, maybe we should make a crafting room. Before yeah, people kitchen. want that kitchen, but the fact that we can't find driftwood right now, maybe you can um, craft driftwood. That's probably not the case. But... Well, that's nice. So that person. I don't know, I forget their name, Jeff, but they're actually playing this game too? I guess so. Cool, what do you think of it so far? <gasps> oh, I can't eat that. Can I? Oh, yeah. Mom, 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 mom. Uh, I should probably get running back to the cabin. Although I'm sure that bear is sleeping in my bed at this point. I'm honestly impressed that you, you can keep track of where you are. I was right going to say, yeah. Oh, uh, well, the nice thing is there's a little cursor here for the cabin. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So you're cheating. Oh, 100%, yeah. I kind of, it would be fun uh, in a Minecraft way if there wasn't. Like, I love Minecraft when you don't have a map and you're just trying to vaguely remember <laughs> stuff. Like, that's the best feeling is to genuinely get lost in a game. Cause it, yeah. Because normally when you get lost in a game, it's like you're stuck in corridors and you don't have a key card or something stupid like that. But mm -hmm. genuinely just feeling like... I don't know where I'm supposed to be going. It's such a cool idea. Uh, uh, Heavy Face says he's put three hours into it so far and that it's been enjoyable. Oh, good. Yeah, I like it uh, more than I expected. Um, I guess, like, for favorite survival games, it's like Minecraft 
and Subnautica. And then outside of that, like, I like the genre, but I don't know if I've ever really gotten too into too many of these things. Oh, what do we got here? Jeff, how are you doing on the survival genre? Uh, I haven't played one for a while now. Yeah. But, uh, I'd be up for it. This one looks cool. Yeah, it's exclusive to the Epic Game Store at some point, but, um... I don't know if they said anything about consoles yet. Anna, do you want to try looking that up? Yeah. Let's see here. Boink, 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 boink. Thank you. What a nice, chill game. Yeah, it is, I feel like, really relaxed right now. Yeah. Even though it's survival. Like, usually I think survival is being really, you know, kind of stressful. Right, right. Well, it's just we're really good at handling that bear. Jeff, can you tell me if I'm making poor mm -hmm. life choices? Uh, I mean, grabbing everything you can seems like a good bet right now. Okay, great. But what about this? Uh, I suddenly... So I'm making like a little arcade place out at our lake. Like at my parents. Oh, you mean real life choices. Real life choices, yeah. Okay. And so we're making this like little arcade room. Uh, got a pinball table which is very exciting. So next time I go nice. home, I'll get to mess with that. Oh, thank you for subbing, heavy face. Appreciate it. Um, but, and then we have like the marine machine out there, which is uh, incredibly fun. And then I was like, you know what you need if we're gonna have a little mini arcade space? Oh, Josh Loblaw says, you did it, Ben, the pinball machine. Yeah, we got it. Because I, I kept trying to explain, because even like um, on Twitter, Jeff Bacalar from uh, CNET, he was like, man, you gotta be ready to repair that thing. Like, it's going to break all the time. It's gonna be a disaster. And so I brought it up with my dad, who is very into the idea of this pinball table for some reason. Um, because he doesn't really like games or video games or anything. Um, but he's like, well, I talked to the owner and he said it hasn't broken down in 30 years, so it should be fine. So we'll see. But anyways, so it's like, okay, we got those two things for this little arcade space. Like, what can we get to make it feel more like an arcade? And I realized it's like, we need like a cool neon sign. Mm. And so I went to a neon sign shop. What do you think? Can I Skyrim down this thing? Sure. I mean, the waterfall worked out all right. Yeah, we technically don't know that there's fall damage. Let's see. Oh God. Easy big fella. Great. Oh, maybe there's driftwood here. Oh. <gasps> Anyways, Jeff, so I went to this neon sign shop, and yeah. uh, and I was like, you know, I'll take, like, a cool big beer sign, anything like that. Oh, that scared me for a second. Um, and some of those signs, turns out, are super expensive. But now I'm so yeah. locked into getting this neon sign. That, like, I was talking about it with my girlfriend yesterday, and she's like, that is the dumbest thing, that you're going to spend, like, $300 on a neon sign? It's like, mm -hmm. I, I think I just want it. Would you recommend that, or am I being insane? Uh, you know, whatever makes you happy, Hanson. Jeff, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, you idiot, what are you doing? $300 for a sign makes no sense. Because it's tough to try and argue for it, because it's like, oh, it's just the ambiance. Like, if you're in an arcade space, mm -hmm. it's cool to have a big neon sign in front of you. Yeah. Uh, MN Gob says, get a min-max sign made. Oh, I that's, think that uh, would be really cute. That would be cool. That is, uh, that's Grant. That's Grant on Twitch there. Thanks for being here, oh. Grant. Chef from Min Snacks. Um, yeah, uh, that would be cool. Just to, like get the arrows or something. I guess they can do custom stuff, but that's probably where you're gonna really be spending way too much. Oh yeah. Uh, but that would be fun. But then the tough thing is like, okay, well it'd be great to put that, boink, 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 um, on camera. But then you need to have the lights down low in order to see it. And then if the lights are low, you couldn't yeah. see anybody else. So it's just, yeah, it gets to be a mess. Let's see. Oh, I bet I still need stump moss. Okay, so I looked it up, and it seems like um, all they've announced is Windows so far. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well. I Which is it. strange. I could see this doing well on Switch. Yeah, if it could run it. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's try and get some of these here. Actually, sorry. I'm trying to navigate this. There we go. Take all those, and now we just are hunting for fur planks. I don't have enough of those. And moss, and then we can make that crafting room. 
Uh, Bob Backwards is asking, what kind of pinball table is it? Uh, it's a good question. It's an old one from like the early 70s, I believe. And it's um, seven card stud. Let me see. Stud pinball. It's some like card themed pinball table. Um, maybe not that. Something in that vein. Maybe it's like a poker theme. Something like that. Mm. Uh, some variation of poker or something. So it's kind of cool. And the nice thing is uh, when my dad checked it out, he's like, oh yeah, well you used to play the exact version of this pinball table at like this restaurant we used to go to throughout your childhood. I guess it was like the first pinball table ever played. Not technically this exact table, but still that model. Um, mm. So he has some nostalgic connection to it. So maybe that's why he's rooting for it. That's cute. Yeah. Um, okay, this moss is going to be the thing that ends us trying to find a little little stupid stump. Uh, oh, Bob Backwards is hoping that it was Black Knight 2000. No, I, I wish I would kill for that. Although, I should just hook up like a little MP3 player to play the theme song from Black Knight 2000 when this other pinball table is going. Uh, Jeff Morana, have you ever heard the theme song to the pinball table Black Knight 2000? No. No. It is one of video games, or just gaming's greatest songs. It is like this absurd early attempt at metal, but there's like voices in it that are in a choir. It is the most badass song. Uh, it slaps, says Bob Backwards, and I can't argue with a review like that. I'll have to look it up after this. <laughs> Please. Uh, actually, you know what we could do? I mean, Are you going to play it? Yeah, it's going to break the computer, but <laughs> let's see if we can Worth actually it. find it here. Because I think, according to the stream, it should still be on the game, right? Black Knight 2000 theme. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> okay, now this is good among trees <laughs> music. <laughs> All right, it starts out simple. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like I've been looking for a great cover of it and no like metal band has done it it drives me nuts because I want to hear it so much So how old do you think that song, like, how old is this pinball machine? Early 80s, I think. You got the power. <laughs> you got the might. No way. <laughs> Give me your money. Beat the Black Knight. <laughs> so that's the Black Knight <laughs> screaming that there's no way you can beat him, and then he just says, Give me your money. Which <laughs> is the best. People tuning in right now are so confused as to what this <laughs> theme is. It's among trees. I don't know why you're confused. It's mainly about pinball nostalgia. The sound of the roaring waterfall and the pinball <laughs> theme song. Yeah, the bears are kind of like the Black Knight of Among Trees. No, just the ambiance and the sound. The sound design in this game is... Incredible. Yeah, it's really progressive. They're breaking new boundaries for what survival soundtracks can be like. They want to inspire you to survive. <laughs> Where the hell is this moth? I just want to hear that guy's voice again. Oh, is that a cave? No. No way. Get ready for battle. Give me your money. Beat the Black Knight. <laughs> Alright, that's Black Knight 2000, everybody. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's gotta be a lot of good stuff in this cave, right? Mm. I can't tell if it's a cave or just like an arch. No, it's a cave. Yeah, everything's so hazy. Hang on. Did that bunny lead you here? What's that bunny up to? Is this just gonna be like a den filled with. Bears. bears. Yeah. You're gonna get murdered. I hope so. Maybe I can barter with the bear and uh, they can give me some moss. Oh. 
What are you? Diamonds? Maybe I can make a pickaxe at some point or something? Ooh. <gasps> Blueprint. Oh my god, look at that! There exactly. you go. That's there perfect. There you go. But I need the crafting room first. <laughs> yeah, don't get ahead of yourself. Oh my god. Uh, can I see where my blueprints are? Maybe not. I wonder if that's just baked in somewhere. Okay. This is ridiculous. Fur plank and moss. How hard can it be? Maybe it's been in front of you the entire time. Probably. <laughs> well, okay, now apparently I'm getting cold. I can see like a little frost around the edge. Jackson Arnold says, wouldn't <gasps> be a survival game without a pickaxe. I agree, but it's funny because if I were to think about oh. what actual survival would look like, it would never, like I feel like pickaxe <laughs> is way low down yeah, it's, yeah, it's like, Okay, Anna, you need to survive in the woods for three days and you get to pick five <laughs> items. Like the idea that a pickaxe would be one of those. <laughs> <laughs> but yet if you're making that game, yeah, top of the list. Like, why do you get a pickaxe before you get a regular axe? Like, we need wood right now. Maybe you need to find a wood or an axe blueprint. Uh, I think I can make an... Oh, yeah, maybe you're right. Oh, <gasps> driftwood? Yeah! <laughs> oh, that there kitchen's coming. And I'm going to be so cold, I can cook myself in the oven just to try and eat myself up. All right, I'll be sure to crouch in the water just to get nice and cold here. All right. Let's see if we can actually... Oh, God. I am very tired. Have fungus, thank you. Get okay. some coffee. Yeah, I do need some. Oh god. Tired freezing. Uh it's not <laughs> looking great. Oh you need more moss? I need more moss, yeah, two moss. Uh. Um Moss moss, I guess for a Spanish flare. Uh let's see. Well, <laughs> it's a bad sign when it's so dark I'm not able to see a giant stump in front of me. Darth Turner says, hello, hello, welcome. Hello, Darth Turner, thank you for being here. This is Among Trees on the Epic Game Store. Oh my gosh. Is my cabin actually going to be warm? Do I got warm blankets in here? <laughs> First of all, we need to close the door. What? Okay. Okay, let's just go easy on ourselves here and not die. Yeah, I'll just sleep. I wonder how you reset that. Maybe I just need like, a campfire. <laughs> Sleepy freezing. <laughs> well, we've got a lot done here. Uh, there we go. Uh, suspect taken has a better joke, just saying uno mas. <laughs> uh, the planks. I can't believe I don't have the planks. All right, let's eat. Eat them if you got them. All right, now, I guess I haven't gone this way, right? Your guess is as good as mine. Okay. Yeah, I, directions oh. aren't my strong suit. Somebody says I might have more planks in storage. Yeah, you're right. I guess I haven't scoured that, but but moss, I definitely don't. Should I even bother picking up more of these sticks? This seems like an excellent podcast game, but it's kind of that tough thing of like, with a game like this, I would like to keep playing it, but when they have such a good roadmap coming, oh, <gasps> boss! <laughs> okay. When they have a good roadmap in front of them, like what's the right point to jump into an early access game? It's always, you always yeah. feel like you're missing out on the experience. Mm. Hello. No mushroom. Like, I still want to play more Hades from Supergiant this year. Um, it's on Steam and the Epic Game Store still, I believe. Um, but it's a tough thing of like, well, if it goes 1.0 towards the end of this year, maybe I should just wait? I don't know. I guess the... Do you play a lot of early access stuff, Anna? Um... No, not really. Yeah, yeah I... It's you, sort of like... I mean, I you know, have been, like, writing about games for a year, and so it hasn't been as, like, long of a time that I would, like, get codes and stuff. Right, um, right. But, again, it's, like, it is, you know, if you can play a more finished product, that's always nicer. But yeah. 
Okay. I'll do like um, play testing, um, but that's like even earlier, you know. Oh, like earlier access. Oh God, easy oh. big fella. Should we just see? That is a huge bear. Look at that. Uh, are it's you gonna lose boy. your moss if you get mauled to death? Yeah. Probably. He's probably hungry for a little bit of moss. So, <laughs> okay. Maybe he's been guarding a giant stash of moss. He's probably made out of moss. He's kind of silhouetted right now. Hey. Ah. All right. I'll go this way. I'll remember you, bear. I'll be back for you later. But look at that. Like, I think objects like this is yeah. kind of an indicator that there's probably some good resources around mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Okay. So it wants you to do something with it. Oh. Yeah. Okay, he's walking away. I think we gotta we gotta tempt fate here, right? Yeah, I would. Well, you're gonna try to go by it. I think you finally way. found your moss. Yeah, I just want to see <laughs> if there's planks up here. Is all. Oh, is there more moss here? Oh god. <laughs> yeah, ep epitomilk on which is right where he just says that like they nailed it for just the look of the bear like just the silhouette yeah. and the coloring like it yeah. does make it seem so cool whereas if it was just like okay no filter no nothing it would just be like okay it's gonna be a janky looking bear oh god goodbye big fella okay maybe there's some stuff around this big object up here right oh yeah there you go it looks like a i wonder if you could climb up it, it looks like a watchtower of sorts <laughs> yeah and then it'll show me all the bears in the arena <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Shathaniel, for subbing on Twitch. We appreciate it. Oh, God. And for the classic spiel, if you have Amazon Prime, then you have uh, a Twitch sub ready to go, and we could definitely use the support. So thanks, everybody. Acornhead Gaming asked, Have y'all ever seen a bear IRL? I remember once that my cottage one trapped me on the dock. Oh um, one that sounds terrifying. <laughs> what did you do? Yeah, did you jump in the lake? But bears can swim. A bear can swim oh, faster. That is true. Than a human, don't you think? Oh yeah. Um, one time I was hiking in North Carolina, and um, on the <gasps> like tr path, like a hundred feet back, we I saw something cross the path, and it was little and um, like black, and I was like, oh, someone's like black or brown lab is off a leash and running. Yeah. Um, and so then I went, but I didn't see any people, so I went back to sort of check it out. And it turns out that it was a black bear cub, and it was with its mom. Um, oh, wow. It was really far away, so it wasn't that threatening. But if we had, like, crossed that part of the path, like, five minutes later, it's really dangerous to encounter a mama bear with her cub because they're super protective. Right, yeah. yeah. I went to... um. God, it's called Madeline Island. I went to some island that we went camping on, and it was, it had like the Guinness World Record for the most bears per capita for like the space of this island versus how many <laughs> bears were on there. And I was like, I was just scared to death. I, I'm a very scared person in general, but as a kid in particular, and I was like, why are we camping here of all the places? This seems like a nightmare. Yeah. Uh, and so we camped on this island, I think off the coast of, or off of uh, Wisconsin. Um, and they're like, oh, well, you don't got to worry about the bears too much unless you get in between, yeah, the mom and the cubs. Then it's going to be a bad time with the with the black bears. And so we were sitting around the campfire at night as a family, and I was probably like 10 or something. And we just heard like these weird sounds of like kids playing from the campsite next to us. And they were like, what? A weird bunch of kids. What is going on? They didn't realize it oh wasn't kids. It was a tree that was just, it had three baby cubs on it. Oh and my they're God. all just like rah, rah, making the weirdest silly sounds <laughs> and we were looking around at night and there was like no mama bear anywhere to be seen and it's just like oh god if we're accidentally in between the mama bear and these cubs it's gonna be a nightmare and so then they're like well if you ever see a cub like the park ranger had told us like just come and tell us uh just come to the uh ranger station or whatever and let us know and so then it was up to me and my dad and we had flashlights and we had to run like a mile on this completely black path through the woods to get to the park ranger station to let them know that there's cubs uh, and there could be a bear nearby. 
Uh, and it was terrifying because it was just like this windy little path and I was waiting just to turn a corner and for there to be the full mama black bear pissed right in front of us. <laughs> it was the scariest thing I've ever done. And then we got to the ranger station and the ranger wasn't there. The door was locked. And like, oh my okay, god. Cool. I guess we'll just go nice. back and sleep in a tent and listen to these cubs all night. Why didn't you leave? Uh, because it was like on an island and we took like a little boat out there. So there's like nowhere uh, we could go. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I guess we could go to a different campsite, but that seems weird. Still, yeah. And I guess it's late. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. Look at this. Oh. La -di da Let's see how this works. Oh, man. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I probably have some bolts over here, right? Oh, yeah. Heck, yeah. Is that all I needed? Uh... Well, let's see. Ooh. Do huh. I, I, I think I might have old rags. Here's all the basics we need. Looks like we need more old rags for everything. Yeah. It's kind of fun. You can make a sculpture to honor the bear that's going to be eating you pretty soon. <coughs> uh, all right. Well, let's go for the axe and see if we can chop down a tree and what we can actually do with this thing. Oh, this bear. He's toast. <laughs> uh, let's see. What else can we conceivably make here? Uh, I used all my bolts, right? Oh. Mm. Do I have? I think I have some steel pipes. Do you have beeswax? I've looked at those things enough, but I haven't been able to do anything with them, I don't think. Oh. Okay. Well, let's just drop all this stuff off. What are you? Um, can I see? There we go. Oh, cool. So it's like farming. This is a cool thing. All right. So let's give myself plenty of room. Uh, oh, I do have the old rags. What can we make with those? Oh, the map. But I need some mulberries for a map? What is this world? Uh, decorations. I mean, I think I want this. I think I'd like to make the shrine to the bear. Have you guys seen Grizzly Man? The Werner Herzog documentary? Mm. Mm -mm. One oh. time my, um, like, high school biology teacher didn't want to teach us <laughs> She just had us watch Grizzly Man. For, really? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, <laughs> for a couple classes. <laughs> that is traumatic. Did you enjoy it? Um, I mean, honestly, I was in middle school, so I don't remember it that well. Do you remember um, like how it ended or anything? I mean, he gets eaten, right? <laughs> and Sorry. how? Uh, yeah, spoilers for the documentary Grizzly Man. Oh, by the way, where should we? Right above the bed? Is that too ominous? There we go. Oh. Nice. Now the bear will be lured in, and then we'll kill him while he sleeps. Um, but yeah, spoilers for Werner Herzog's Grizzly Man. It's about Timothy Treadwell, who goes up to live in Alaska. Uh, and he keeps, like, filming his summers up there, and he eventually brings his girlfriend up there. And then they get eaten by a grizzly bear after he thought that he had befriended them. And he thought they were, he was like best friends with grizzly bears. Uh, and it is horrifying because Werner Herzog, like they have, oh my God, that sounded really good. Oh, look at all this. Fur planks for days. So many fur planks. But the crazy thing is he was rolling on his video camera while he was getting eaten by the bear. And so the family has those tapes and the camera was like aimed away or whatever. Uh, but you can hear him getting <gasps> eaten and his girlfriend getting eaten on the tapes. And so Werner Herzog in the documentary, they don't play the audio, but they show Werner Herzog listening to it. And it's horrifying because he just listens mm. to the audio and then he just shakes his head at the end. And he goes, destroy these tapes. That's all he says. <laughs> oh, like, can you imagine listening to that? Yeah. Oh. I thought that that's what um, Tiger King was going to be about. Um, but it's very different. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, you think the climax of that's gonna be like, ah, oh, and then a tiger eats him. The end. Well, I genuinely thought it was the same plot. Like, it's about a guy who makes friends with tigers, but that's n n not the case. Right, right. Uh, thanks, Acornhead Gaming, for subbing to us on Twitch. Appreciate it. Oh, Puck Fitzberg is a Grizzly Man expert. Says, I don't think you hear the girlfriend get eaten. I think she runs away. Is that mm. right? Okay. It's been a while. Well, good for her then. Did she survive? Oh, she still oh, died. Oh, she still died. Oh, my God. Ugh. Acorn Head Gaming says 50% off with Prime Student. Oh, thank you so much for subbing. I didn't know that there was that fancy discount. I mean, that's pretty good. I don't have any more food, do I? Hmm. Oh, and your stomach's looking pretty empty there. Yeah. Yeah. Can I eat hey, fur starving. planks? Because now I have all the fur planks I could ever hope for. Maybe some good old tree chopping will quench Do you think uh, chopping trees makes you hungry faster? Ooh. I don't know. If they have the stamina gauge, I'd imagine that's where it takes place. But Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. The scary thing is, without the map or compass, I feel like I've been... Oh, deepest dive on Grizzly Man, as Jackson. Well, that's a problem, because if we really want to take the deepest dive on the documentary Grizzly Man, we would have to listen to those tapes. And we mm. shall not be listening to those tapes. Uh, okay, so I don't know if I've already been this way. But... Uh, Derp Thought asks, so survival manager kind of game, was there much direction given at the beginning, or was it more open-ended? Yeah, it's uh. completely open. But I do love that, you know, I don't have them up now, but I love the idea of being able to pin on the side, like, exactly what you need to craft this stuff. Like, that's all the direction you really need for, for getting rolling here. Okay. Well, we're not have you been down there yet? I think, yeah, because I think this is the waterfall that we jumped off of. Oh, uh, okay. But I think we turned around pretty quick, but it is getting cold now. What do you two think? I feel like we're sticking to a pretty small area, whereas, like, in Minecraft, I would roam a lot more. Yeah. Right. It's scary to do without the map, though. Maybe I'm a baby about it, then. But... Yeah. Oh! This is not working. Eat. Oh. Am I? Okay. <laughs> Great. At least my health hasn't been harmed. Uh, let's follow the river. Surely bears don't like rivers, right? Oh, God. Some more stuff. <gasps> Ooh, black mulberries. Whoa. One more of those. I can make that map, baby. Chicory. What are you doing here? Jeff, when was the last time you went on a hike? Uh, uh, probably last summer. Okay. Where'd you go? Uh, it was some park up north. I can't remember. Northern Minnesota. International Falls. Oh, cool. And it was a whole camping adventure. Uh, no, we my family rented a cabin up there so we just one uh day we drove up to international falls which was only like you know an hour away from there yeah and went for a walk and that was the day that i got fired oh that's from right Game Informer. <laughs> well good i'm glad i brought fun. it up then yep oh my gosh there are too many things hoof fungus is a fun thing uh okay so i can't eat those mulberries or else i can't make a map out of them Makes complete sense. I should probably wrap back around to the thing. Um, yeah, I was thinking about going for like a camping, hiking adventure uh, pretty soon here over a weekend. And then when you're in Minnesota, it's like, okay, well, you got the Badlands in South Dakota. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, like, how far away could that really be? It's a seven and a half hour drive from the Twin Cities, which just blows my mind. It's going to be such a haul to get out there, but I think I'm still going to try and do it at some point this summer. Like, I was there a lot as a kid and stuff, but I haven't been for 20 years at least. Well, bring your pickaxe. Okay, great. Yeah. And watch out for bears. Can do. I used to, I was so scared of bears while camping as a kid. I used to always sleep with a stick. 
Mm, because of your that'll save you. Yeah. Well, I remember reading that, like, you know, the equivalent of eyesight for bears is their sense of smell. And so if you're attacked uh. by a bear, you're supposed to, like, jab a stick into its nose. Because if you take out its oh. nose, it's, like, going to be blind out there. So that was the logic, even though there's no way that a stupid kid version of myself, <laughs> or even an adult version of myself, would be able to have the presence of mind to jab a stick in a bear. Okay, I can't wait to see what that map looks like. My dad used to work at Yellowstone. Um, that's too hungry to sleep. Let's go ahead and wait till the morning. Um, so he used to work at Yellowstone, and he had this story that scared the hell out of me, where he was camping uh, with a friend, and that they woke up in the middle of the night, and they could hear a grizzly bear outside in their campsite, like, rummaging through their stuff. And then, it's very Jurassic Park, but he says that he then saw the silhouette, or not the silhouette, but the shadow of the bear from the moonlight cast onto the side of the tent. And so nice. he was watching this bear's shadow and where it's moving. It was getting closer and closer to the tent. And him and his friend were on the far side of the tent with their pocket knife, waiting for the bear to come in. Then they were going to slash the tent and sprint. Uh, but apparently the bear never came in. But it uh, stuck with me. That's probably why I'm scared of bears. My dad was telling me bear yeah. horror stories for a long yeah, time. Yeah, I'm surprised he isn't scared of bears after that. He should be, but he's like the type of guy who's like, oh, they're friendly. They're beautiful creatures, you know. One of those types. Count Pickles says, fun fact, bears are the only known animals apart from whales and humans to have formed communicative speech. Huh. Really? They can talk? Apparently. Weird. Well, that's why you heard with those um, with cubs, the cubs in the tree. I guess so. All right. Let's see how this map's looking. Ah, <sighs> The bear map. We've got the bear map. Oh, wow. That's really helpful. Okay. Let's empty all this stuff. Well, I guess I'll keep a mulberry. Is there anything else I can cromp on here? Oh, actually, let's see if we can... Do we have enough? Do we have the bolts, I wonder, for the cooking room? No. Dang it. That's how they get you. I do that every time. Okay. Well, let's see. I feel like this was the direction where that bear was. Um, I could use like a aiming thing, but okay, let's just try and go back this way and see how it works on the map. What the? All right, we are scraping food bottom here. I can craft bolts from steel pipes. Ooh, hang on. I think I have steel pipes, right? Let's see how we can mix and match these things. That's weird. When I think of animals that can talk, bears are not up on that list. No. I mean, I guess that's kind of very... Oh, yes, look at this. It's a very human-centric way of looking at it. It's like, well, it doesn't sound like humans talking, so it can't possibly be talking. Yeah, I'm wondering too, because like whales and humans have communicative speech, but don't like dolphins and other. I was thinking about dolphins as well, yeah. Yeah. Guys, I don't know if this Twitch chat is reliable for science facts. <laughs> no, 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 we read it. So okay. It must be true. I mean, there it is. Weird. The We're going to fact check it live. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thanks for. Oh, oh my geez. Jesus Christ, King Prometheus. Thank you so much. A storage attic. Can I make this? Oh, I bet I can make this right now. Fur planks. Bears stolen. actually speak dolphin. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> oh, King Prometheus. King Prometheus sub gave a gift sub to a bunch of folks, so you're gonna be hearing his generosity coming through. Thank you. Oh wait, 28 fur planks for that sucker. Oh, I need one more bolt. It's so close. All right, let's go out and see if we can find that bear. Oh, I thought that was him right there. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay, so... I wonder if we should go... Well, 
I'm pretty sure this was an area where You're hungry was. again. Uh, well. Eat those bowls. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. Isn't there like a cartoon where we see someone like eat some bolts? Well, everybody knows that robots eat bolts for breakfast. Yeah. Ah. Okay, so I guess this is uncharted territory this way, which means it's got to be filled with bears. So, if once you approach the bear, how are you going to deal with it? What's your plan here? Uh, well, Anna, I got a little friend here called Mr. <laughs> Axe, and I'm going to go for its nose. <laughs> when you're a kid, you actually slept with an axe. That's right, yeah. <laughs> I whittled my own axe. <gasps> oh, look at this. We're not going to starve after all. Well, those mulberries could be better. <laughs> well. That was barely anything. Oh, moss. Those tree. mushrooms really fill you up. Yeah, I know. They're kind of tough to find. It's like. And now you're swimming in moss. That's true. <laughs> moss, moss everywhere. I cannot. Can you eat the moss? I don't think so. Which is a mistake. You should be able to kind of eat anything in this game. Just like real nature. Okay, so what do you think? Should I just keep going this way or should I try and go back to where that one bear was? Oh, oh here we go. Thank you, Dottie. Yeah, I wonder how inspired this dev team was from just the, the look of Firewatch and Ollie Moss's art yeah. overall here. I think it works really well. I'm wondering how many different biomes they're trying to make too. Anna, do you want to pull up uh, like their roadmap they have on their site for like future yeah. updates and stuff, just to get a sense yeah. of like what is capable in this game? Uh, let's see. Maybe there's a big old bear cave around here. Oh, that's surprisingly close. Oh, there's tree mushrooms back there, Jordan Jones. I'm sorry I missed those. Oh, there's weather. That's probably going to make me really cold. And there's no place to warm myself except for a bear cave. Uh, really? Okay, I guess we'll just keep heading back around this way. Okay, so it's looking like this real map's just like detailing game features that okay. will be added. Yeah, yeah. So it looks like this summer um, they're mainly focusing on bug fixes, and then they're going to take a dev team vacation. That's nice. I like that um, they put that in there. I'm sure some people are like, F you, work on the game. <laughs> but that's nice they just like have that set for a team that's right. probably scrambling here. Um, and then in autumn, ooh, there's going to be a pet, uh, feature, so you can have a pet, a brewery extension. Wow. Uh, improved environment variation, improved loot areas, visuals, and variation, new loot items, mm. uh, you can change your outfit, uh, have a uh, hydration system so like imagine like sprinklers like farming possibly god this game, i don't know what that's referring to yeah i'm sure it builds in a big way but god there's a lot of stuff hidden here we're really in yeah the, in the rookie stages um and then like aesthetic upgrades to your cabin and then in winter they're just gonna be adding beekeeping and wildlife and looks like some story Oh, and weird. some fishing system improvements. Nice. Oh, so Just, fishing is in here now, though. That's yeah. Cool. So that's a good survival game must. Yeah, well, that's cool. That's a uh, that's ambitious. I do Epidemic. think. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Someone asked if you can uh, smash the crates with your axe. Oh, mm -hmm. yes, you can. God, that's a good point. Um, good did idea. I walk by a crate? I feel like I did not too long ago, didn't I? <gasps> Was it back here? 
Hello. Great. Oh, there we go. How did I walk right by this gold <laughs> mine of everything? All right. Crate, you got it coming. Oh, that's exactly what I need. That's perfect, actually. I love how that giant crate is holding, like, a handful of gold. <laughs> we got to ship this in. <laughs> Drop it off in the middle of the woods. I don't know what's going on here. Just like a plane crash every once in a while. <laughs> they say lockpick. Dang it. They oh. need lockpick. Uh, I feel like we need to end this stream by messing with a bear. Getting mauled yeah. by a bear. Yeah there's, yeah. there's no other way here. Yeah. Please let there be a bear in this box. That would make me very happy. Oh, <laughs> Anna is a writer after all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Uh, but coming up uh, this week at MinMax, we have Min Tracks, our standalone music podcast that's airing on Friday. So you can subscribe to that. Um, and it's with Giant Bomb's Alex Navarro. And they're going to be reviewing like a Public Enemy album and Deftones. I think it's going to be the matchup that, for that episode. So you can check that out. If you support us on Patreon, you can run over and leave a, a question or a comment for them to read on that episode as well. It should be fun. And then on the Minmax show this week, um, Kyle has been secretly playing The Last of Us Part 2. And so we're going to have very, very spoiler-free impressions from Kyle before we kick off the deepest dive for The Last of Us, uh, which is going to be next week. It's going to be airing on Wednesday. Um, and then we'll have the post up on Patreon looking for your comments on... Oh, oh my God. On the game's oh, first six hours uh, going up on Monday. But Hey, lead us to the bear. <laughs> What if we watch the bear kill the deer? Oh, that'd be so satisfying. Come on. I mean, we're in uncharted territory here. We're still on. Oh, wait, the look map. right, look right. Still the deer? Yeah. Maybe. Do you think, like, no. Maybe I should have been no. crouching around you're, a little bit more. You're not catching that one. <laughs> uh, the one that got away. Yeah. I was a weird kid. And um, I remember in high school when I had my sword, which I think we talked about on the Game Informer show, that all of us owned a sword at some point. Um, but I remember, like, you know, I lived in the country, and so we, our house was, like, on this hill. And down at the bottom of the hill, there would always be, like, deer just wandering through the yard and, or something. And I remember, like, whenever... I didn't do this by myself, but, like, for something silly to do when friends were over, I'd be like, okay, you guys stay in the house and see how close I can get to those deer with my sword. And I would take my sword and go charging down the hill. And like, I wouldn't have hurt the deer. I, I'm very uh, anti-hunting in general. But sometimes like, it would take the deer so long and they'd be so startled seeing me running up with a sword. They're like, <laughs> I would get shockingly close to those deer. And I looked really cool too. Deer are remarkably stupid. <laughs> They really are. Yeah, like just seeing them like trying to figure out whether they should jump across the road and jumping back and <laughs> forth. It's just a nightmare. I feel very fortunate that I grew up in the woods and I've never hit a deer driving my car. Mm. It just seems like uh, it was a real Russian roulette every time you're driving around. Uh, let's see, discard that. I am so far from, far from this cabin, I feel like I'm going to. Yeah. I thought you turned around and were heading back towards the bear, but... I mean, yeah. do you think I should just try and go towards that one bear we saw? Yeah. Because I think it was like... Right? Was it here? <laughs> Roughly? I think so, yeah. But maybe they're just going to be around... any area where there's a... Um, a tower or something interesting, right? This seems like if you had to place a deer somewhere. Hello, Flaming Queso. Thanks for being here. Oh, this is beautiful. Come on, bear country. Uh, I'm probably going to freeze if I stay out, here, stay out here overnight. Let's see. Uh, I guess then I gotta keep that hoof fungus. It's just too fun to say. So 
something. Hmm. Did you play Subnautica, Jeffem? Uh, some. Okay. Yeah. That seems like your type of game. Yeah, that was a good one. I guess uh, that was the last one I probably played then. Sure. There's that Subnautica Sub-Zero, um, that expansion that is in early access right now that we need to check out for a long time. Maybe we can put it in the Great Goaty Hunt at some point here. What is going on? I think this is the edge of the world. <laughs> I can't. Oh, all right. Okay. All right. Sorry, gaming gods. I'll go back towards the cabin now. That's really strange. Uh, Flaming Queso asked, this is going to be Subnautica vibes? In that it's a survival game um, without a story emphasis right now. And Subnautica definitely had more of a story push, but I think there's, there's some overlap here. Uh, this seems a lot more accessible than Subnautica, and that game is also kind of a triumph for being so easy to get into, but this one seems a lot cleaner overall. Uh, Flaming Queso, thank you for joining us. Just a heads up, we're hunting bears, um, so if you see any bears on the screen, give us a shout, please. Scream into your computer monitor to let us know that they're nearby. Because what do you think is going to happen when we see that bear, Jeff? Do you think it's actually going to eat me? I think so. Okay. Well, that'll be satisfying. Yeah, I don't see it going. Honestly, I don't see us beating the bear. Sorry. Yeah, maybe What if it like... just started talking to you? <laughs> That'd be quite <laughs> the twist. And then it was like, did you know that bears <laughs> are... That sounds like a dolphin. <laughs> 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 It's like in Spongebob, when they swear, it's just like the <laughs> the dolphin sound. I'm not going to do a dolphin sound on the screen, but yeah. maybe someday. I'm afraid I don't know what you mean when you say dolphin sound, Anna. I need some example, <laughs> some sort of impersonation. I'm coming for you, bear. Do you remember that guy in Psychonauts in the camp that always was talking about the bears? He was like, I will find you, bear. He's like a crazy Russian guy with a huge, tall oh. bee head. They're the bees, oh, there's the so bee. you gotta be close. Oh, what happens if you hit the beehive with the axe? Ooh. Can you get honey? Ah! <laughs> Anna! <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Why have you forsaken me? Okay. <laughs> ah! It's an Animal Crossing! I'm so sorry. <laughs> Wait a minute. I need at least that honeycomb thing. Yeah, you need that beeswax. Oh, God! Okay, the bees have <laughs> lost the scent of me. All right. Oh, I wonder if I can eat that honey. Okay. Poison? Oh, you're poisoned. Well, maybe bears are able to sense that I'm like a weakling now, and they'll be more eager to attack me. I wonder how much the bears roam around if they're in like a set place. Jordan Jones says, who would have guessed attacking a beehive with an axe isn't a good idea. <laughs> okay, I feel like we're coming back around to where that bear was. It's right? Because I think, I think it was down yeah. in this area. I think, unless it was... Mm, let's see. No, I think it was closer to okay. the cabin. Yeah, because it seems like they'd want to try and put a bear a little bit close to the cabin to start with. So there's at least two around here. Oh, the honey's a bear lure. Oh, uh, you have the eyeball sign up there. Does that mean you're being watched or being seen by? Shut up. Oh. Shut up. No that way, that's up the so last creepy. Time the bear side or the bear side. Are you serious? <gasps> so what so. if the bear's been following us this entire time? That'd be so cool. Okay, um, Jeff. Um, oh, I plus hope so. Plus, CZE says, beware of poison. Bed needs to use med kit. I can't. I don't have... <gasps> oh, but there I'm going to die from this stupid thing. I asked ye, bear. Right in its Wait, butt. this bear does not care that we're here. You'll care now. <laughs> that was real. I think you can talk to it. Yo, Wait. bear, I come in peace. 
<laughs> Dang it. Well, I assume that was from <laughs> freezing to the death poison. and being poisoned yeah. and not from the bear attacking me. So I wonder if the bear attacks aren't even in this game yet. Or I was just so subtle and he yeah, so sad. Pre Alpha me. doesn't have bear attacks. Oh my god. Uh and now it doesn't look like it's gonna Oh. And there it is. Among trees crashes. Oh, we're back. Okay. Apparently I had not saved? There's a way to save? Oh my god. Anyways, thank you so much for joining us oh. for the Great Goaty Hunt, everybody, and the Grand Adventure in Among Trees, available on the Epic Games Store. Uh, I like this game. Um, I think I want to keep my eye on it as it uh, evolves over time, maybe by the end of the year. We can come back to it in some way. But uh, Jeff Marana, anything you want to plug or mention? Nope. Nah. Great. Then uh, check out the MinMax Show uh, podcast this week. Also, we just had an interview go live on our YouTube channel uh, with Shane Kim, who was a former Microsoft executive, basically the guy who had Phil Spencer's job before Phil Spencer, and he was also the CEO of GameStop. Uh, so it's an interesting conversation about uh, the evolution of the Xbox, the origins of the Xbox brand overall within Microsoft, uh, and then also just what he learned as the CEO of GameStop. And there's some interesting Game Informer talk in there as well, so you can check that out if you'd like. Any feedback would be appreciated. All right, thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. Bye! Do you want to get your name or Twitch or YouTube channel in the description of everything we release? Record a podcast with us, put a picture of your choice on MinMax's TV, or a whole lot more? You can check out the benefits for supporting us on Patreon. If you support MinMax at any tier on Patreon, you can submit questions or comments for us to read on the air, and you'll also get access to the wonderful MinMax Discord. We need your help to keep this whole indie trainer rolling, so we'd appreciate it if you checked us out.